r slash today I ducked up. Tifu by almost committing a war crime. Obligatory. Not today. This was about 10 years ago. I started doing stand up when I was in the army. In Afghanistan. Actually. I started telling stories around the fire at night. But eventually started doing shows in the chow hall or during talent shows if we were on a bigger base at the time. It wasn't uncommon for me to do so badly that I lost people during these shows. I even had a platoon op to go on patrol early rather than watch my whole set. I was less fun than possibly dying. I wanted to get better. So I ordered a book and started working on trying to improve crowd work. Talking to the audience and being more physical. I figured if I could make the interpreters laugh with the language barrier, I'd be on my way to being a better comic. During our next patrol, we detained several suspected Taliban fighters. We needed to keep them on our base until they could get picked up by intel people. So we needed to watch them for two days. I thought the idea of a literal captive audience was too good to pass up and basically tried to do crowd work and run bits by them in an incredibly animated manner. Imagine Sebastian Maniscalco. But two months into comedy, I volunteered for as many guard duty shifts as I could. I'd try jokes. I'd ask for their names and where they were from. Jobs, etc. Anything I could try to make a joke about. Never a single laugh. Eventually, they got picked up and apparently one complained about my joke specifically. I ended up getting a stern talking to for unconventional interrogation because I kept asking where they were from and what they did and had to explain that I was so bored and desperate to get better at comedy that I almost inadvertently committed a war crime. Too long didn't read. I performed stand-up comedy for detained Taliban members that went so badly they accused me of war crimes. Got a stern talking to for that. Tifa by using a nose hair trimmer to manscape my nether regions, and subsequently revealing mankind's most horrible secret on reddit. As preface to this Tifu I am committing one of the greatest societal taboos and revealing a secret that heretofore has been zealously guarded throughout the ages. It is a correlate to childbirth in that just as postmenopausal women wouldn't dare tell an expectant mother how truly agonizing childbirth is. No man in his 50s would traumatize a man in his youthful prime with fears of the anatomical horror that is to come. But times have changed and new technology places men in grave danger. So now you must know of this biological atrocity, in order that you might avoid my disastrous fu. Sometime around midlife, men's hair follicles undergo a revolting mutation. While hair atop one's head thins and drops, new hair grows in places you never imagined. Bristle stiff tufts sprout outside and inside of ears, and up nostrils. Eyebrows become bushy, unruly and coarse. Pubic hair turns grey and scraggly, I shit you not. All these hairs grow alarming fast and require constant attention, lest you become that guy with a bunny paw sticking out of his ear. Their eradication is a battle men wage stoically and silently through the second half of their lives. And, as with any battle, there are casualties. Now, on to my tifu. I found a great nose hair trimmer in the as advertised on TV aisle or CVS. It looks like and operates like a miniature hedge trimmer. It's virtually impossible to cut yourself but mows down the hair. Yesterday I was trimming ear, nose and eyebrow hairs after a shower. I was so happy with the results that I decided to try it on my pubes too. It worked great. Soon I had gone a bit overboard and pretty much shaved my balls in the base of the shaft to the skin. I liked the new look, but my bushy taint was a testicular neck beard that had to go. I positioned a makeup mirror on the bathroom floor and laid down spread eagle, knees up, so I could see and trim everything well, where once just a few wispy hairs prevailed. Unbeknownst to me a virtual forest had arisen. Worst of all, my butthole was sporting borid moustache brows. Trusty new nose hair trimmer in hand. I prepared for battle. The ass brows had to go first. I began on the left and quickly decimated the bunghole caterpillar. I moved decisively to the right. Prepared to take down ass brow 2 with one swift stroke close to the skin. However, this was not to be. Instead, my ass hairs wrapped around the trimmer blade like Rapunzel using a superheated curling iron. Pulling the device tight against my skin and jamming the blade. The hairs were being ripped from my flesh and the pain was excruciating. No matter how I tried, I couldn't remove the trimmer. Wiggling it tugged the hairs more. Restarting it was a double down that I lost. The hairs were wound even tighter against the blade. I frog walk naked to my bedroom. One hand holding the trimmer tied between my butt cheeks. 
and searched for my cuticle scissors. No luck. I did however find a carpet knife. Unbearable pain breeds desperation. Back on the bathroom floor. I tried in vain to cut myself free, nicking the tenderest of flesh twice and drawing the first blood of battle. I was making little progress and it was time to make the ultimate sacrifice. After a suitable prayer, I gripped tight on the trimmer and committed reverse hirakiri, Brazilian wax style, ripping off the trimmer blade along with its ass brownette trap. Blinding pain left me curled fetal, hyperventilating, while blood slowly trickled down my ass crack. I decided to share my tifu and expose life's cruel secret in the best interest of mankind. That others may avoid falling prey to the technological wonders of a scene on TV hair removal tools. Young men of reddit, I beg of you to heed my warning. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage. Rage against the dying of the light. Too long didn't read use nose hair trimmer on bunghole brows. Tore myself a new one. Tifu by accidentally letting my landlord watch me come. This didn't happen today, but exactly today last month. I live in an apartment by myself and for about a week or so in September we had a notice in the foyer of the apartment building that any apartments with windows facing the front of the building, mine included, will have the windows replaced with much better sound insulating window on the 28th of October 2019. This was a due to be done a fairly long time from the day I read the notice so I set a reminder on my phone as I was walking out the building and on my way to work. Fast forward a month or so. I wake up as usual, make some coffee have some breakfast. I'm kinda one stroke too ready to go to work. Awake but not dressed. I'm chatting to my girlfriend via Facebook messenger. We live apart, and she was very horny that morning and things kicked off fairly quickly. Before I knew it, I was butt naked laying on top of my duvet and blankets. It was still fairly warm here in October, enjoying myself and sending each other videos. I have very loose working hours so it didn't matter if I we continued for 5 minutes or 2 hours. With my girlfriend sending me rather naughty videos, I decided to put my earphones in so I didn't share those sounds with the rest of the neighbors. They are in a noise cancelling headphones and once they're in, you wouldn't even hear someone shouting 2 feet away from you. My girlfriend and I are having a whale of a time when suddenly, I can feel some vibrations in the frame of my bed. I have a tram that runs right outside my apartment and every time one passes, I feel the same vibrations. I thought nothing of it, assumed it was a tram and carried on, with the videos of my girlfriend playing at full force, laying there fully naked on my bed, I start to come. As soon as I do, I catch something out of the corner of my eye. I turn my head to see my landlord and two construction workers walking swiftly into my bedroom. I start manically trying to find something on the floor to cover up with. A towel. A jumper. Anything. Meanwhile I'm still uncontrollably coming. Which I can only describe as my dong being like a crazy daisy. Maybe only UK peeps will know that reference. Having witnessed the entire orgasm. My landlord who gives absolutely zero fucks about what she has just witnessed, waited until I covered up to tell me that because no one responded to the knocking, that explained the vibrations, and a verbal call if anyone was in, couldn't hear because of the headphones. They assumed the apartment was empty and she was showing the workers which windows were to be replaced. Meanwhile I am panicking, wrapped in a duvet that is covered in semen, sat on my bed whilst I have two guys happily working away to replace the windows. I was so shocked about what just happened. I froze up and was sat on the bed in that duvet for the entire duration of the replacement. 25-30 mins. To make matters worse, my apartment was an absolute bombshell with dirty clothes, food scraps, and dirty plates bowls everywhere. Once they left, I went to check the reminder I set for the repair work, only to realize in my haste to get to work. I set the reminder for the 28th of November 2019 rather than the 28th of October 2019. I never turned the reminder off and it served as a good reminder today to share this story with you guys. TLDR. Set a reminder for repair work for the wrong month. My landlord and two workers walk in on me blowing my load uncontrollably as I'm watching sexy videos of my girlfriend. Tifu by loading 600 pounds of feta cheese in the back of my sov. Obligatory this didn't happen today. This actually happened almost two months ago but I am finally able to semi laugh about it. But belly. Background. 
my parents work in the food industry and have a business that requires a lot of feta for a product they make. In order to get the cheese I have to drive 40 minutes into New Jersey to get to the only distributor of this particular feta cheese in the tree state area. I had also done this trip once before in the company van but it was in the shop and my sub has a ton of space to put all 20 of the 30 pound buckets of cheese. Half the weight of the bucket is cheese and the other half is the salty water the feta floats in to preserve it, in the car if the seats are down. Lastly I had to return the most recent batch that was picked up about a week ago because they mistakenly given us expired feta. Onto the real duck up. So I pull my sub up to my family's business and begin to load all the expired cheese into the car so I can return it all for the new non-expired cheese. I have just enough space to put 18 of the 20 buckets in the trunk with the seats down but the last two didn't fit on the floor of the trunk so I decided to stack the last two to fit the whole batch in. They seemed pretty secure because they locked into place when they are stacked so I didn't think much of it. Everything is going well for the first 10 minutes of the drive so I'm feeling good and I'm making good time. But then the tiffer happens. I'm waiting at a traffic light behind two cars and the light turns green the two cars in front of me start to accelerate and I do the same but a forklift decides to back out of the driveway and cut me off so I ease on the brakes but the forklift is still backing up not realizing I'm there so my ease on the brakes becomes a slam. The next thing I know the two buckets of feta that were stacked on top of the first row go flying to the front of the car and both smash on the center console. There's brine feta water completely splattered all over the seats and windows. My hair has large chunks of feta. The cuff holders are a 4 inches deep in feta water. There's chunks in the rug and in the AC vents. It is basically a recreation of the scene from Pulp Fiction with the gun going off in the car except instead of brains and blood it's feta chunks and feta water. I immediately get the car fully detailed but smell is still lingering in the car after a 4 hour cleaning. I try to get it cleaned the next week and the smell is still so horrible. Imagine spilt milk and rotten cheese combo. Both cleanings do nothing for the smell. I bring it back to the dealer and I find out that the car is basically totaled because on top of the smell the wires are compromised from the salty feta water that got all over them. So now I'm stuck without a car and I can never look at feta the same again. Too long didn't read. 600 pounds of feta cheese totaled my car and now I don't have a car nor can I enjoy a delicious cheese for the foreseeable future. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content more It's free and that's a great price. 